Are you ready? Can't crush us. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody. Power driving, hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. And it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is Ringside Rain, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. And now, here is your host, Mark, the Mark Martinez. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, Season 7. Yeah, do you believe that? I don't. Season 7, Episode 1 starts right now, and it starts, this might be the first year that we actually start with a spotlight, and it's just because, it's just because, it's the time of the year, it's the time of the week, it's the time that we just start with a spotlight. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and man, I'm super excited to learn about, know about, hear everything about, because I know nothing about Devo Dior. Yeah. Stumbled upon on Twitter. We did some, hello, how are you? Let's do this. Let's do that. Got it all set up. Got very minimal notes taken care of. And you know that makes for the best podcast. It does. I am excited to have Devo on to hear all about wrestling, lifestyle, everything Devo is going to tell us about. But you know we have to pay the bills first. Collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all that cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans have down at Collar and Elbow. Please use our promo code, Can Crushers. All one word, capital C and can, capital C and crushers. You'll save 10% off of your order. Yeah, it's that easy. Can Crushers. It's your favorite wrestling podcast, so it's your favorite promo code when you buy stuff from Collar and Elbow. That's it. That's easy. Guys, you know where to find us uh, after seven seasons. You know we're everywhere. I'm not going to say it a lot this year, but I'll say it once. Spotify, Google, iTunes, Stitcher, Amazon Prime, you know, Farmers Only. A- anywhere you can listen to podcasts, that's where we are. It really is. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter slide into our DMs, calling all wrestlers, talents, referees. If you're listening to this because Devo said, holy shit, these guys are pretty cool, that means you're allowed to come on the podcast as well. Even if Devo didn't say, holy shit, these guys are pretty cool, and you're just listening to this because you found us, drop us a DM in any of those socials. Slide into our old-fashioned email, cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Get set up. We want to hear your story. Be like Devo. Devo is number one this year. All right, listen, nobody can touch Devo. Number one, he slid in, did it right. Boom, boom, good to go. All right, Devo is it. You can only follow Devo now the rest of the year, but following Devo is the way to go. All right, here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. Again, the promo code is Can Crushers. All one word, capital C and can, capital C and crutchers. You'll save 10%. We come back, Devo's on the line, ready to tell us everything that Devo wants to talk about. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow 
is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Shalonce Royal. And if you're not listening to Can Crushers, like, what are you doing? You need to listen. You have to listen. And welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Guys, you heard how excited I am to talk to Devo Dior. It is just one of the podcasts, one of these interviews that you you just have your head wrapped around. So the true women of class, Devo Dior, former women's champion, and a lot to come with that. But Devo, welcome to the show. How the heck are you doing today? I'm doing quite amazing. Thank you for having me. This is my first time doing one of these. And that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing within itself because pat on the back for me to to get a little gloat right there. But I am shocked that this is the first because you are, and I'm going to say this nicely, you're interesting. People should be clamoring to have you on to talk wrestling and anything else because you have a litany of things you're doing here, and we'll get to all of them. And I have so much to share with you. Like I had told you before when we had messaged and you said it, nothing's off limits. I'm an open book. And if people want to know, I want them to know. That's how I am. And that's what I like to hear. So before we get into that, how was your holidays? How was everything? Because I know you're a true fan of Christmas. (laughs) 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 So the story behind that is I don't celebrate holidays. I don't decorate. I don't get into any type of spirit or anything. The way that I am is I take a very minimalistic approach. My grandma taught me best. She said, I make a ham, you eat the ham, that's Christmas. <laughs> and that's how I am. I spend it with some friends, and then I watch their kids open presents, but I did nothing. <laughs> and I can't knock that. That is, to me, that is a great day. It really is. I am... I I don't consider you a Grinch because you're not like hating on it or anything. You just, you do the minimalistics and that's what I want to be. Like, I don't need a tree. The family needs a tree. They, the family needs to do this, to do that. I don't need that. It is about just here, here's some presents, get out of my way and I'm good. That's, that's a good day for me. I like the ham too, but I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, I did. You know, I really stopped celebrating holidays like that when I was around 15, when I had some things happen in life. And, like, honestly, say my life shifted. And I just – I never really saw a point in – I'll be honest with you. I don't like to decorate for things because I don't see a point in leaving something up for two weeks and then just having to take it all back down. That is too much work for me. Someone else can do it if they want to do it. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. And it's not essential. It really is non-essential. I mean, everybody's busy in life. How many times do, if we're going to go back to old school, do we have people coming over treeing that looks at your tree and then you move on to the next house? That shit doesn't happen anymore. There's no reason to put one up just for you to stare at it for a month and call it great because after it being up for two hours, the glow has left. So, yeah. That I'm already, I need a Devo shirt, I need a Devo hug, I need a Devo kiss, I need a Devo keychain. I need all this stuff because I'm now the leader of the Devo fan club. <laughs> That's question one, and I am on board. But let's get into wrestling. So way back, way back, who introduced you to wrestling as a little Devo? You know, there's like, hey, you got to watch this, and... Was it mom, dad, Uncle Joe, Aunt Sandy? Like, who who said this is your upbringing, essentially? The very first person was my mom. Because essentially, a few people on her side of the family were in the business already. They had done small, independent things. And it's just like, I had always been around it. But then when her and my dad were together, my dad was just a mega fan. In the sense that... They weren't together very long, but I remember 
being around four years old, my dad took me to a Raw. And ironically, my first Raw was the Edge and Lita Live Sex Celebration. Oh, jeez, so. Louise. <laughs> Nothing yeah, like that, being that, thrown into a porno for a wrestling right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, it, it was something. But my mom's side, like, her cousins wrestled her uncles. So I was always around it. And then as I got older, of course, I was a fan. You know, I was typically more drawn to the different styles. I didn't really, with my dad, he didn't really just introduce me to the American style at first. I watched a lot of old Japanese wrestling with him. Like, he was big on making me watch The Great Muda when we watched, or things like that. And then, like, I had videos of my grandpa, ironically, being in the crowd at WCW in 75, I believe. And he's got this big afro in the front row. So it's just, everyone's either been fans or been involved in some way. Like, my dad was a security guard at PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. So every time they'd come through, he'd be a security guard for, like, Raw or whatever they did. I remember the one story he told me was when the Godfather came through, he gave him $500 and told him to go to the local strip club and find him some hope. No way. <laughs> Yes, so my dad got to pick out some hoes for Raw one time, so that was cool. <laughs> dad knows pimping ain't easy then, because he had to go. <laughs> Legit, had to go. This is awesome. But that's also where I lead into, like, a lot of people don't know this about me, but my dad really wasn't a part of my life either. Because him and my mom had a bad falling out with their relationship, and a lot of people, like, ask my motivations of why I got into the business myself, and I was like, at the end of the day, I want to show people that, as we'll get into this, I want to show people that you can come from literally nothing and make yourself into something. So when I say that nothing's off the limits, I mean, ask me what you want and I will show you. Yeah. I think that's the best policy to be is completely honest, and that's how people get to know me, and that's how I'll grow as a person, because I can't grow if I don't allow myself to open up and forget the past and forgive it in a way. And then learn from that as well. Yeah, that is that is amazing advice. Quickly here on Can Crushers, Devo, I'll tell you a story, and um, it, it kind of comes the same around the same way. My mom and dad had a, a tumultuous relationship, and uh, you know, it was I, I lived with my mom when my mom and dad got divorced, and there was hate, and there was just. It was just so strong that I didn't see my dad for years. Um, my mom then gets sick and passes. And I, I don't know if it was Im embedded into me from whatever or whatever. But uh, my dad came to the funeral and he didn't need to. And, you know, over these last three years, it's just, you know, turning a blind eye to the past starting a relationship all over and saying, Hey man, this is really cool that, you know, he's older in life now too. And how I, if you've listened over the last couple of months, you know, I damn well died over the last two weeks. Uh, but it, it's just, it's live day by day and take every memory that you can, you know, from it being whatever. So I understand where you're coming from. I, I really do. And this is cool. So, I told you prior to the show that I'm going to tell you I love you and all of this, and man, I already do because this is going to for for starting the year off. This is a hell of an interview already, and we haven't even touched anything. So thank you. Of course, like I said, open honesty is the best way to go, and I have nothing to hide because honestly, at that point, I never say if, but when I make it to the big time. You know, this is all going to come out eventually. Somebody's going to get pissed at me and try to leak it. So I might as well leak it myself. <laughs> Touche, yeah. F everybody else. You tell your story the way you want it to be told instead of having some gossip queen on A&E or somebody saying, hey, this is what Devo did and spinning it. I agree, man. I agree. All right, so we talked about some of, you know, dad and, and like, Japanese wrestling, but who did you kind of transition to as a youngster once you found the American style? Who did you like? Trish Stratus was my main one. Um, for some reason, my grandma 
constantly recounts to me that I was in love with Stephanie McMahon. And then, of course, Flair, Cena, and The Rock. Those were my did, top five. I didn't see Cena. I didn't see Cena in you. I saw Flair. I saw... Oh, everybody sees Flair, clearly, with your glitz and your glamour. I saw Trish with kind of like your mannerisms. And I was kind of stuck because I always do three. And, and we're changing it up when I do them and everything. I was kind of stuck on the third one. But I, I definitely, I didn't see, why why Cena? I mean, Cena, come on, everybody loves Cena, everybody, it's Cena, it's Cena. But why Cena? Because the other two I clearly see. Honestly, as a kid, it was a spinner belt. I had, my dad <laughs> okay. got me a replica <laughs> spinner belt. And I don't know why, but I just I was in love with that thing. And then growing up, of course, you appreciate people's work ethic in it. Oh, yeah. That Cena's one of those people that I look up to that he's a true transitional star. And whenever that time comes for me, that's what I want to do. Because I know that you can't do this forever. I will always be enamored in the business in some way. I've always told people that, whether it be I end my career with having a backstage job somewhere, I do something like that. But I also want to do outside ventures. Like, my goal in life is to be a champion on the big time, have a match at WrestleMania, have a talk show create some type of brand deal with somebody, and most of all, have a very successful business. And I feel like Cena has touched on all, if not most of those things thus far. And oh. along with him and The Rock and Flair, these are people that you know. Anybody knows those names when you say them. And damn it, I want someone to say Devo, and they don't just associate me with, well, he used to wrestle here. It's, oh, Devo. He did that movie. He had that brand deal. He has a damn good tequila. <laughs> you know, just something like oh, that. Oh, you're having tequila now, too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. The, the sky is the limit with me. That, it, and that's that's a great way to go. Um, so you saw all this as, as a youngster and everything. Would, as you're trucking through you know, high school and everything in sports. And this is where you want to get some stories in. This is perfect. Like, did, did you do some sports in, in high school? Um, were you a, a drama kid like me? Were you on, like, the morning announcements like me? Like, I want to know how this all curate, curated into you and then that aha moment that you're going to wrestling school. Because you're athletic. But you're very full as well. So I, I got to imagine there's got to be some drama in there too, right? Ironically, I did some plays in high school, and then I had a drama class, but I never did anything beyond that. Right, yeah, now, that's, that's roughly the, the same as I did. Yeah, so it's enough. And this is going to be kind of a surprise. I played football my freshman year until I blew up my knee. And then done. No more football after freshman year. Yeah, because, see, I, I didn't – what annoyed me about that whole process was I didn't blow out my knee actually playing football. I blew out my knee going down for a squat on the weight. So, yeah, that, that was something. And I, I remember when it happened. Cause I went down for the squat. I had 225 on my back. And the minute I went down, all we heard was a pop. And I thought I was fine. So I came back up. I racked the weight took them off the bar I ended up going to the bathroom because my knee was really bothering me and it's all swollen and I take the picture to my uncle and I'm like hey this isn't normal right and he's like no go to your nurse I go to my nurse and ironically this woman looks at me and goes take some ibuprofen you'll be fine walk it off take two of these and call me in the morning yeah yeah I ended up having problems the next day because I was swollen like a balloon we ended up getting a doctor's appointment and my amazing doctor, Dr. Deborah Sinclair, down here, she helped me. She braced it, and I found out I tore all my cartilage and ligaments in my knee. Unbelievable. So I, yeah, it still gives me problems. I was braced for a good year. Never surgery braced. then? Did, did you have surgery? No. No, just in that's, a brace for a year. Yeah, that's what was odd to me about it, because she had told me, she said, I want you to avoid surgery, and we're going to try this brace. And the brace, all in all, has worked out. The only problem I have these days is I get fluid. And then 
depending on how long I go in the ring, it'll get a little swollen, but nothing beyond that. Wow. That that's that's great. That's great for you. Because surgery adds to other complications and you know, maybe another surgery or something down the line, but no surgery, that's that's unbelievable. Uh that's good. Good, 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 good. So you did talk and, and I don't you don't need to get into like the the naughty truth of it or anything, but mom and dad kind of had a little bit of an outing. So you brought up uncle and he he raised you uh, a lot. Is this the time frame of when you're now progressing into, hey, I'm going into wrestling and you're telling your uncle this first? Or did you actually have all this conversations with mom, too? See, my whole family growing up knew that this is what I wanted. And, like, I, let me get into a backstory of my childhood so people don't get yeah. too confused. My mom, after her and my dad separated, we moved back to Tennessee. And she ended up meeting my stepdad. Well, growing up in that household, it was very nuclear, to say the least. He had a stepdaughter. I won't name her name for her own privacy, but she wants nothing to do with the business or having her business out there. But he was a bad alcoholic. He was very abusive. My mom, she just, she had that type of relationship where it affected all of us. And it was also like we were never good enough in a way. Which, growing up as a kid, you don't understand that. You don't know why it's happening the way it is. And with my stepdad, the way that he was with his drinking and abuse, he ended up going to prison. When I was nine, my mom ended up losing her mother, had this big mental breakdown. And while my stepdad was in prison, she ended up meeting this other man that I thought was good for her. And he ended up being a real bad addict and lead on down the road. Like I was in and out of my uncle's house a lot as a kid. And that's why I said that he essentially raised me because he had to make those hard decisions for me when my mom couldn't. And when my mom got bad off on drugs, when I was 15, I ended up getting put to foster care. And I spent 10 months in the system down here. Oh I was God. with, luckily I got placed with a great family down in Jackson, Tennessee. I will always give Miss Jacqueline to know her props because she was one of those that I can't say she was an angel because she has adopted 13 kids out of the system. She's given them a chance. She to tell you she has 15 kids in total. Only two are biologically hers. And I spent 10 months in that system until my best friend from middle school and high school parents legally adopted me. Oh so that's how I got out of the God. system. And I'll tell you, if that didn't happen, I would have never got out of the system until I was 18. Because my mom, she just recently, like we, we don't have the best relationship still, but we're trying. She went through this program called Transitions where it was a year of a Christian-based rehab. She couldn't talk to men, couldn't have any outside communication with anybody besides close family. You know, no music, no TV, and that's essentially what she needed to get clean. So after a battle for years, she finally got clean, and it's just like, now we're at that point in life where we're trying to repair. And it's, it's not easy, and I want anybody to listen to this know that it's not an overnight thing. There's still things that we still have to work through because she missed the key points of life, and she, she understands what she doesn't. And then it's with me, I also have to understand to let go of that hurt and that anger because it's not something that you need to harness. There's no point of being bitter and part of your growth and walking through. And if I cry, I'm sorry. I just, I've never been as open with people. Like people always see me at shows and things and I'm just very happy, but they don't know. And everyone, there's always that question of why did you get into the business? Well, honestly, I just, I don't want to show people that you can come literally nothing and make yourself into something. I want to pay off my grandma's house. I want to do enough in this business to know that I made some type of impact. Because if I could just inspire one kid to know that they can come from a drug-addicted family and make something so I've done my job. You you did. Uh, I completely agree with you. Um, 
thank you for sharing. I, I, I have the chills. I have tears in my eye. Uh, it, it's, I don't think anybody has ever been that candid on here before, Devo. That that have just they said we, you know, we've had some rough lifestyles, or you know, they 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 said kind of what we hinted around, but you just laid everything out on the table and said, "Here, this is what I'm doing. This is my my mom, my stepdad, my my uncle, and essentially my best friends are now my brothers because the parents adopted me like this. This is unbelievable. And I get to a question all the time at the tail end, but you may have listened to a couple episodes or whatever. And I'm going to jump forward there and we'll just bounce all over the rest of the show. You know, you have touched a child out there already. I mean, I don't know who it is, but you know, at a wrestling show, have you being a badass or a goody two shoes or whatever, you know, especially with your persona and life today, there is a child that said, I want to be like Devo when I grow up, have it be a wrestler, have it be whatever. You know, you've done that already in I know that might be a tough pill to swallow because you don't see it yet because maybe the child didn't come out and say anything yet, but how does that make you feel? Because you said, once you do that, you kind of win. I feel you've already done that because I've seen clips of at least children looking at you and you see that little glimmer already. You've touched somebody already, Devo, and this getting out and telling your story it's going to be a lot more. So that's awesome. It, it, it feels like fulfillment in a way. I guess it's the best way to say it. No, that's, I that, mean, that's greatly put that way. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm, I'm trying to think of the words to say. I, just, I don't know how to put it. I think fulfillment is the word because I just, I want, I want people to know you can do anything like that thing of, Anything you can believe you can achieve is so true. So true. Yeah, it really is. All right, let's reverse again. Get back on. I, I, I'm not pu- pushing that over at all. Get back on wrestling a little bit. So when do you make that phone call or find that training camp or training school that you're like, hey, I'm going? And then this time, it's essentially... I know you're 18 and you're you're just getting out of like the foster and everything, right? But do you tell your foster parents I'm getting into wrestling and have it be because of my lineage that I have or I'm doing this just for myself? Because it, it's it's a twofold. It sounds like both, Devo. See, I'll just look before I answer the question, I'll clear it real quick. I got out of the system when I was 17. Okay. Early adoption, but the way it went was, you know, I had wanted to do this for the longest. My adopted brother, Jonathan, he was an amateur wrestler. And then my adopted sister, Brianna, who is my best friend, she's the one who really pushed me. She's like, hey, you know, there's some great schools around here. So, ironically, before Corgan bought NWA, my first school was, I guess, a subsidiary of the NWA. And that was my first training contract was I signed a year. I had to have my mom there to co-sign. And it was with NWA. I was 17, my junior year of high school. And that's when I started training for this. That's crazy. That's crazy. When did you write the NWA already? That's unbelievable. Which, you know, it's not recognized as a part of NWA, but that's what the contract said. And I'll get into that as we go in. Right. And it was just one of, it was one of those things that like, that's ultimately why I picked why I picked because the man running school was Golden Boy Greg Anthony. He had come highly recommended from some people that I knew. Oh, and that, I that, that name is synonymous. There, there's if, if you're an old school guy like I am, you know that name. You know Golden Boy. Y- yeah. It, it, it worked until it didn't work. That's how I put it. I was there for a good six months. You know, personal issues aside, it just ended up not working out. But I will say Greg was the first person to see beyond me wrestling because that's what people don't understand. When I started, 
hate to say it, I didn't want to be a wrestler. I didn't. I wanted to be a manager. It there because I was we've had told, a couple line like that, but then you just get that transition and you get that bug. Sorry, go ahead. You're fine, you're fine. I was told that I wouldn't be able to wrestle with my knee and I had those doubts, but when I started training I was like, This is easy and when he was the first person that came to me he said, Would you be interested in announcing? And honestly, I was told by multiple people, every opportunity you take it, no matter what, unless it compromises your personal values. And I was like, never done it, but I would try. He handed me a mic, and we spent three hours practicing introductions, and I made my debut the following day at a birthday party show as the ring announcer. <laughs> that's crazy. That's and that's a was, crazy story, but that that puts a smile on my face. The commu- the whole communications thing, anything with announcing commentary, anything like that. The he felt it in you. If three hours is a drop in a hat, so if you can get in three hours and you're doing it the next day, kudos to you. And see, I did that with him for six months, and then I had a very I call him one of my brothers in the business. Like everyone says, you walk out of the business with five close people. Well, I will say kid wrestling, because I'm not going to put his real name out there. Right. I don't want anybody looking into him. But he is one of those people that ended up going to Burt Prentice. And if anybody knows Burt Prentice, they know he was a manager named Christopher Love, great promoter, all time just amazing man. He went to Burt. And then I ended up going with him to a show. And I guess thanks to kid wrestling, you know, trying to sneak his way into getting me somewhere. God forbid he can't let me do something on my own. <laughs> Jokes aside, Bert comes up to me and he goes, hey, I heard you were an announcer. And I was like, I, I have. I've done some announcing. He goes, would you mind announcing for me? I was like, okay, I, I don't mind doing tonight. So he hands me a mic and he goes, cool, here you go. I did his show. And that's kind of really where my journey started. Because after that show, Bert hands me an envelope. And at this point, I had never been paid in wrestling. So I didn't know. I tried to give it back to him. And he goes, no, no, honey, you've earned it. You've earned it. And then he goes, by the way, would you like to join us? I was like, I'd love to. That's how the conversation went. Was I thought I'd love to. And he goes, well, I need you for this date, this date, and this date. Welcome to the family. And that's how I started with Burt Prentice and USA Championship Wrestling. And the knowledge under Burt, like I said, if anybody knows him, He's highly regarded by multiple people in the business, like Mickey James, Michael Rapata, Lawler and him were very close. And thanks to Bert, I got to get on TV. I got to do everything that I wanted to do and meet some of the most amazing people ever. And that learning curve for me was just, it was astronomical because I'm 17 at the time. And I remember my 18th birthday, we were at the Omen Arena in Jackson, Tennessee. And I told Bert that I wanted to manage, and he told me, he said, if you're going to learn, you're going to learn from the very best, but you're not going to start in the ring, you're going to start from the bottom. And a lot of people don't know this, but Bert had me start with his posters and selling tickets with his sister, Marilyn. And then from there, I progressed, I helped him with his POs, and I was helping Bert with like TVs and stuff, and I was sitting there in his creative meetings. And from there, I learned some invaluable skills that you couldn't learn unless you were just thrown into it. And I will always say Burt Prentice is one of those people that truly began my journey of learning every aspect of the business. Because Burt had told me that he wanted me to know every part so that if I needed a job, I would always have a job. That sounds like Burt sounds I – I don't know Burt personally or you know even a little bit. But that sounds like somebody that is really looking out for you, knowing that he sees something in you in the business and just it's right because at any time in a match, you know, a second later, you could be done wrestling your whole life, but you could still be in the business if you know the backstage, if you can do the commentary and stuff like that, that that means a lot because even up around our neck of the woods up here. You are your camera, your this, your that, your how I don't want to I don't want to say a bad word, but you're you're stuck at one thing. You're either commentary. If you can't be commentary today, 
But you can't be a, a manager. You can't be a this. You are this, 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 and this. There's no you learn the whole thing. It is that's it, that's it, that's it. It's very regimented around Pennsylvania. And I don't like it that much way. I want to change it, but I don't I don't have the the funds to buy a, a ring or do something like that. Yet. Yet. There's a lot in the in the hopper, but I won't release that yet. But go ahead. And I will get to this. Rest in peace to Bert. He passed away last year from a long battle with cancer. And I will say he's one of those people that honestly helped along the way. Like when that time comes, if I ever get inducted to some type of Hall of Fame, he'll be one of those names that I need. Because he, he gave me that invaluable advice. He taught me a skill and he told me to run with it essentially. And for that, I'm forever grateful because I have a, a very funny story behind working with Bird. If you'd like to hear some of those stories. I, I do. I do. Yes. I said, this is your time. But before, before you get into a story with, because this is your time here for a second, before you get into a story with Bert, I want to know one thing because everybody's like, holy shit. Mark hasn't asked the question yet. Who is Devo? Okay. So we, we've talked about, some of it has been from Cena and this and that and this and that. But who else have you encompassed into yourself? Because if you go way back, um, and I don't know if, if you do tape study or how much tape study you did, I see a lot of Adrian Adonis in you as well. Like that's that's somebody that's really popped for me. Um, Trish, uh, of course, Trish was one, but... Talk about who Devo is and a little bit like that, then jump back into the Burt story because I definitely want to hear a Burt story. Devo is, you know, that is just a hard question. Just, I'll be honest, some days I fight with, am I too much different from this person that I am in the ring? But all in all, Devo is a kid that wanted it all. And someone that wouldn't stop working hard. Because I'll tell you now, when you hear the name Devo on a show, Devo's the first one there. Devo's the last one to leave. And Devo loves the finer things in life. I mean, it's it's simply that I don't masquerade those fine things as much as I probably should. But it's something that I know I had. I didn't have this growing up. And damn it. If I can make that a possibility, I'm going to make it a possibility because I've worked so hard to get to this point. And a lot of these people that, you know, you bring up the name Adrian Adonis. Ironically, I, I didn't know who Adrian Adonis was. And my person was Adrian Street. Who oh, I've actually got yes. With. Another. I love Adrian Street as well. Okay. That one's even farther I, back. That's why I was shocked that you knew that one. Go ahead. Ironically, Adrian Street texted me a couple of weeks back. And I'm not going to fully detail the full length of our conversation, but Adrian has bestowed the exotic name upon me nice. and told me to make that my own. So these are people that I've looked up to, and it's just like I had this charisma and what people call this natural born talent. And that's why I want people to know when you hear the name Devo, you know you're getting a show. You know you're getting something because if I can't do one thing, I'll do another. I can I can literally do it all. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say I'd be repping that great, but I've done it a few times. You know, I may look like a lost flamingo in there sometimes, but damn it, if I can do it, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As my sister has called me, Devo, keep a damn job, Dior. <laughs> Your sister's not wrong. Your sister's not wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, that. Like I said, it's kind of a complex question, but it's not at the same time. But right. to, the best way to sum it all up is I am someone that when you hear the name, you associate it with the fact that this person has worked hard, whether you love them or hate them. And this person wears a whole lot of glittery eye makeup that sometimes gets in their eyes during matches and causes them to their eyes to water to the point where they're blind, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Diva, why are you crying in the middle of your matches? I'm not! The damn makeup's running my eyes! 
Yeah, yeah. Um, tried to put on some eyeshadow the other night and stabbed myself in the eye with the damn brush. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> Maybe we need some help for Devo on that end, uh, getting glamorous and beautified and everything, because good Lord, we don't need a blind Devo out there. All right, let give me the story. I, I want to hear the bird story. Now I'm clamoring. Now that everybody's gotten the who Devo is question, because I know that was going to be one of the first ones. Mark, you forgot to ask who the hell Devo is. Well, now we know. I want the stories. I love the backstories. Go ahead. So ironically, when Bert had brought in Tommy Rich to one of our shows at the Elman Arena, and this is where my history lessons had failed me. I had heard the name Tommy Rich, but I wasn't exactly enamored with who Tommy Rich was. So I was announcing the show at the Elman Arena. I was trying to find out, you know, where's Tommy Rich because I want to get his basic info for when I announced him. I go up to this man, this older gentleman with blonde hair. You got to think, I'm looking at a poster. And it's just a group of guys around him. I said, excuse me, sir, do you know where Tommy Rich is? And he goes, no, I don't know who the hell that guy is, but you can go check the locker room. Turns out I was talking to Tommy Rich himself. Yep. Because that's what, <laughs> that's what an old school son of a bitch like Tommy Rich would say. Yeah. Well, here comes, here comes the funny little part. As, after that interaction, and I find out it's him, we end up, talking more and we end up doing a lot more shows together or they said we're at the omen arena once again and tommy comes up to me and he goes can you go find me a five foot four blonde piece of you know what <laughs> to entertain me and i'm like tommy what and he goes well you know we, we hear we hear you're good with the ladies and i don't mean in that sense kid and he just pats me on the back and it's like the perfect time in my friend Kid Wrestling's mom was there. She goes, Now, what does he need someone like that for? To rub damn Ben Gay on his knees? Oh my God. <laughs> oh <laughs> my those... God. Wake up, mom. It was a, it was a timeless moment that you had to be there for. Cause I'll tell you, anytime that Tommy Rich is on your show, that is somebody that is going to, if someone is sad or upset or in a funk, you can't be around him because he's always eccentric. He always has these freaking, it's like amazing conversations with people. And he's a ribber. I would say Rich is a ribber. Whether he wants to say it or not, he will rib you. And it's amazing. And I've witnessed a few of them. And a lot of them I will talk about because some people don't know that he did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be in the book, at what, you know, years down the line when Devo's done and he has to, you know, he doesn't have to release a book, but he's going to release this, you know, unfiltered book. Then those stories will come out, right? Because that's still making you money. Uh, um, maybe I'm working on the book right now. Well, yeah, you could work on the book right now, too, but you don't release it until later on, until much later on. And maybe I'm just going to expose everybody in the book, like you said. Who knows? Yeah. Whatever gets me money. It's it's the best part. It's Yeah, you have to. Tebo, don't lose your job. Yeah. Love your sister already. So let's talk about um, you, you've done everything with, with Bert, and he's essentially trained you. And now, how do we get to your first match? Let's talk first match. Let's talk a little bit about wrestling training as well was there any time in wrestling training you're like oh shit i really like this commentary stuff i like this ring announcing stuff i love this manager stuff this wrestling training stuff is now a bunch of hoo-ha it's it's rough see while i was on the road with bert i was still getting in the ring and doing that but i wasn't i'll be the first one to admit i wasn't full-time training like i was because i had Stuck my guns to ring announcing. And then an opportunity came when we were in Dixon, Tennessee. Bert was having a holiday battle royal. And they just asked me would I like to be a part of it. So I'll, I'll send you a video later on because this is one of those unlisted videos I have on YouTube. But my first match was a holiday battle royal. And I was so scared. I didn't have anything proper to wear. I was literally in a pair of sweatpants, a t-shirt, and some Nikes. Oh God, that man! And I, sorry, yeah, I've seen talent with my air quotes having that match. 
Those were rough matches. Sorry. Oh yeah, I was I was in there for about two minutes, and when I got thrown out, I landed on this old lady's cane, <laughs> and it was just like, you know, it, it was just one of those things that some of the names that were in the match have gone on to do bigger things. Like Blake Christian was a part of that match, and a few other guys that I can't remember off the top of my head. Like I can see a face, but I can't put a name to it. I'm, I apologize, but I just looked back at that. I'm like, well. Anytime someone asks me what my first match was, I'm just going to tell them it was with Blake. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, was, I was in the ring with Blake Christian. Yep. Yep. Good to go. And that's, oh, they're like, oh my God, that's awesome for your first match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Went two minute match. Quick. Beat the hell out of me, but I'm good. In reality, we just like stared at each other for a good, <laughs> awkward just silence. And then he, he laughed when I got eliminated. We talked about that backstage. We all laughed, and they were like, you were nervous as hell out there. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was. So once you came out of the curtain, the nerves didn't go. Because I, I hear a lot about you have those butterflies in the back, and the butterflies are still in the back even to this day, you know, five years later. Because that's good. You always should have butterflies. That's excitement and everything. But it, it turned to worse when you left the curtain for your first match essentially, which you usually don't hear. You were just an, a bundle of crap, essentially. Oh, yeah, because I wasn't announcing that night. So I was booked to do this battle royal. I thought I was ready. I was not ready. And ironically, during this time, you know, because I wasn't very active in the ring, I put on a little bit of weight. And my sister said that this, that match I call my pregnant lesbian match, because that's what I was like, was a pregnant lesbian <laughs> I clearly have to have your sister on the show just for the puns all the time. She's amazing. She's she's definitely your ride or die, isn't she? Like she is. Uh, she's going to be your number one supporter. But if you go down the wrong path, she's just going to call you out, isn't she? She already has a oh, few yeah. times. Yeah. See, I already said that. Yeah. See, before I started traveling with my boys, as I call them. My sister was my main travel partner beyond kid wrestling. And, like, she's been there. Any important match that I needed her there for, like, she's – I can honestly say she's one person that has literally called off her job to be at one of my shows, and I appreciate that so much. She's one of those unsung heroes that, you know, a lot of people don't acknowledge those people. Yep. And I have to, I have to acknowledge her for that simple fact that she's recorded. She's done whatever. At one point, there was talks of her actually training herself. Because we were going to have her be my valet and manager, like have her be my Miss Linda. No And way. sadly, oh, man. Because see, a lot of people don't realize this. My sister is six foot three, and she is 200 and double digit numbers pounds. So she's not a small girl. She's wow. a big girl. Yeah. And she just has this presence about her that with her being so tall and being so built like she is, that if she were to be at ringside with me as a heel persona, it would be believable. Like you would think she'd mess somebody up. Yeah. I, you just gave me the numbers and I'm already scared to death of your sister. Maybe I don't want her on the podcast because when I meet you, she'll slap me around. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Love you, sis. Love you. And see, the sad thing about it was the only thing that stopped her was she had a back surgery. So she couldn't get in there and do the training. And then she's about to have to have another back surgery because the first one had complications. So I'm like, you know, I wish it could have happened the way that I wanted to. But with her and her back, I don't want her getting in there and getting hurt again either. Right. Yeah. It, it's this. You don't, you know, you don't want any begrudging injuries at all. So, and you know, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, go ahead. I was just saying, you know, she gets a bigger pop than me, then I may have to Tanya Harding her. <laughs> and it comes back around. And it comes back around. Yeah. So let, let's talk about how did you come up with Devo? How how much is Devo truly, and we don't do real names on here, how much is Devo um, really you? And the persona and everything like that, because we talked about it and I'm going to leak. Listen, 
you were a women's champion, downtown Bruno. We can get into all of this, but how much is Devo you? Devo is that part of my life that living in the southern states as I did growing up, like you couldn't be flamboyant or anything down here. When I got into wrestling, I found a way to mix those two sides. And Devo has allowed me to truly explore who I am as a person. Like it's it's 100% me amped up to a level that no one outside of the business has ever seen. And with my personality, as people say, and my charisma, it's helped me skyrocket to opportunities that people wouldn't even imagine in my area. Like this, I will say that the reason I love wrestling so much is this business has given me everything. I mean, it got me some work on Young Rock season three, ironically, where I met downtown Bruno. It got me the opportunity to go. I was scouted by a few reality shows that I ended up not doing. It got me the opportunity, like I said, to now work with upcoming Impact, doing some ring crew stuff, and hopefully some and beyond that. It got me noticed by some people at OVW. Like, do not Devo say his is, name. Do not say the guy's name that we've already talked about. I'm not. Don't okay, worry, don't worry. He already has gotten so much. I'm kidding. Daniel Spencer. <laughs> Daniel F. Spencer. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> And she like, I, just because the way that I grew up, I'm very much a perfectionist in every light. Like, if I mess up in a match, that's one of those things that I, that's what people say is their biggest, like, critique about me is I'm a perfectionist to the point that I could say it could hurt me in a way because I hate to mess up. For me, it has to be perfect. And I beat myself up about that. And I know I shouldn't. But it's one of the things that this was something that I worked days, hours, spent a lot of money out of pocket. I had this great lady in New York. She goes by Butch Diva on Instagram. It's Tiffany Rhodes. She custom made my gears. Her and Rick Cataldo, which is the boy diva, who is an amazing drag queen and professional wrestler. Like, huge shout out to them. They're the reason why I have the elaborate outfits that I do. Like, I, when people, that's what people think. They think that it's a gimmick. When I say that I, you know, I've done the Hollywood route, I've done everything I could. I'm like, no, like it's legit. I got my gear made by a fashion designer. I did the young rock stuff. I've had other opportunities. Have there been things I've turned down? Absolutely. But my point is, is I want people to know this is authentically me. Are some points turned up to a hundred percent? Absolutely. Like in my everyday life, do you see me walking around my house with a full face of makeup? holding a mini dog in my hand that, you know, I'm just going to let this out there. One time I was holding the dog, Chloe, she's a little miniature poodle and forgot I was holding her and had to take a bump while holding the poor dog. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that I have video of that. I'll show you that too. <laughs> I'm going to have like, a ton to watch later on today. I'm excited. Yes. And it's just like back to the question. It's, it's a hundred percent me, but it's also a hundred percent amped up. And I just want people to know, when you know that Devo's on a show, Devo's going to give their all for a show. Yeah. Because like we talked about, the Women's Championship win. This That title win was special to me because I was in this great angle with a very close person in my life. I grew up with her. She essentially, I don't, for wrestling-wise, I credit Autumn Marie and sexy Sarge O'Reilly for being the ones that trained me to wrestle. Because they got me in the ring. They saw the potential. They knew I could go. And they're the ones that taught me, essentially. They took everything. Because I told them when I went to them and wanted to wrestle, I said, I want to start from the beginning. And that's what we did. And I can honestly say my first match under them was against Autumn, and we clicked. Nice. And as I watched back that footage, it's you could see the progression and – the way I say it is if you're not cringing at your old matches, you're not progressing. Yeah, exactly. Your your rumble, your battle royal, look at the way that you just disregard that. But you know you grew from there. And it's like 
this because a lot of people don't realize this. Autumn and I were enamored in this angle for a whole year. That's how long this took to have this final moment where I won the title. And it was various things throughout the year. And it was just, it was special because Autumn wanted to showcase that I was more than what people thought. And I will say a lot of people discredit me for working with the women, but I tell people these women have hit me harder than the men ever thought of hitting me. Like that's how I put it. These women have worked their, their butts off to get where they are. And with Autumn, she and Sarge taught me the business part that I was lacking. They taught me how to work a crowd, the psychology of it, how to tell a proper story. And I can honestly not thank them enough for that. So in a way, you can honestly thank Sexy Stars O'Reilly and Autumn Marie for Devo becoming a thing because they saw that in me and they pushed for it. You brought up working the women and how some people disregard that. And I give all of them the big middle finger because that's not what we do around here because I hate hate. So if you're anywhere near that and you don't support any of that, Mark will say it right now. I apologize. Go fuck yourself. This is not what we want in professional wrestling. Enjoy professional wrestling. Wrestling is for everybody. Go jump off a cliff. Um, how much backlash, though? Sorry. I get on my high horse because I really get pet peeved about people uh, that they book wrestling their own ways and everything where Devo is a character in wrestling. And, and you have so many others. Listen, uh, both Adrians we talked about got the hate back in the day as well. Um, my, my son came out a couple years ago that he's gay and we're transitioning through all of that with him. So yeah, it's not needed in life, let alone professional wrestling, but let's talk about you. Okay. You, you said you get a lot of hate, not, not hate, but I've now turned it into a hate session. I'm sorry, Debo. Um, you get a lot of maybe backlash or something. What, what are you getting? from people and, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to say the show. Yeah. Don't, I, I don't, don't you I, have to give up names, details or anything, but just a little, I'm just going to go to, I went with a friend to a show recently. And one of the guys there told me their exact words were, you have ruined your entire legacy because you have worked with these women and you have downplayed everything you've ever done. And no one can take you legitimately because of that. That's what I was told. I'm shaking my head because was, I'm disgusted right now, Debo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for somebody like that saying something like that to you. That's it disgusts me. It's one of those things where a lot of I've learned with a lot of these men, they they hate the fact that I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm being successful in my aspect. And I I chalk it up to jealousy, honestly. Honestly, sorry, can't no. talk today. <laughs> no, that's a and great. That's a great way to put it. Go ahead. It's just one of those things that I don't listen to them. Like I tell everybody, I appreciate your input, but this is why I think you're wrong, and that's where I go from it. Because it's the fact that you know these women, the, a lot of these unsung heroes in the business that are women that I have worked with, they taught me things that the guys wouldn't bother with, because like. Along with your son, you know, I I was outed at 15. It was a hard journey. And a lot of the guys, I'm not afraid to say, a lot of the guys in the business, like, strayed away from me because they essentially thought, like, I was discredited. I will, I'm just going to put it like this. Since I got in, I have been discredited since day one. They thought I got in the business to sleep around. They thought I got in the business because I didn't care. They thought it was just me wanting the spotlight and things like that. And I'm like, it's not. So a lot of guys wouldn't give me the time of day and they constantly trash me because of it. I've been told by multiple people that I, I wouldn't last. I don't belong. And ironically, half the people that told me the same thing are no longer working. And here I am five years later. Good. Good. Shine, Devo. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't want to continue to rant, but shine. I want to make this positive because, yes, I F everybody that thinks that they can't. Uh, I am so proud of you because of all of this. That's the main reason that I've contacted you because I knew there was a story like that 
in you to come out and, and say, you know, be who you are. I'm paraphrasing. Be who you are. Do what you want to do. Push. Be that star. It doesn't matter. You have a support system. Yes. These women are your support system. I love how you said that some of them hit harder than the guy that you were in the ring with. Yes. You don't need this hate. And I'm I'm not just saying, I'm not just pointing to you, Devo. I'm, I'm saying to everybody in Can't Crush Your Nation, everybody listening across the world, you don't need this hate in your life anymore. It's 2023, folks. Grow the hell up. Just love life and live. That's all you, we really have to do on this world is be happy and take care of each other. If you don't like what Mark's doing, you don't like what Devo's doing, you don't like what my 16-year-old son Ethan is doing, turn around and look the other way. It's not hurting you. I love you, Devo. And I love you guys, too. And I love that I can do this. Because that's another another point I want to bring up is, like I said, the same people that they essentially trashed me for working with the women mostly and doing what I did. is like those women have gave me a spotlight that I couldn't get anywhere else. And a part of that is those women, a part of working with them has given me the opportunity to work with Impact, the opportunity if I wanted to work with OVW, like, I feel like I wouldn't have had that because Sue Young, when I met her and we formed a bond and a friendship, she told me one thing that I took to heart. You know, when she wasn't trying to drag me to the undead world. Yeah, I was going to say, she, <laughs> was this prior to her dragging you to the undead world or did she just drag you back and tell you and drag you back again? Well, before I get to the story, you know how I got out of going to the undead realm? Probably because you look so damn good, but what was it? <laughs> that and I, I sacrificed a child. She wanted the she wanted the innocent <laughs> blood of a child. So I gave her that. And she said, "We're good. We're good. We're good for now." But if we meet in the ring, I'm going to drag you to the undead realm. And I was like, "Okay, I can, I can, I can save myself now." But later down the road, I'm toast. <laughs> Bring it all back to the very first question I've ever asked you about. Hey, how was your Christmas? And you're like, "Oh, kids, essentially." <laughs> There it is, all over. We're about an hour in, and we're still blaming everything on kids. Go ahead. Sorry. Children. She told me, she was like, "There, honestly, I don't feel like there's anything like you in the business right now. And you have a look. You have the charisma. You have something different. And any locker room would be valuable enough to have you. And we got into talking about some other things. And ironically, she's the person that helped push me towards the impact because she knew I had sent some stuff in. She knew I had met a few people there, but she's the one who got me in touch with Daniel. And I, you know, she probably don't want me to thank her, but I'm going to thank her for giving me that push because she also saw something that I'll be honest, I didn't see in myself. And it ended up all working out in the end. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know <clears throat> what is today's date? Today is the second. You guys are listening to us on the fourth, and your impact tapings are about ten days away. So that's pretty awesome that they're really right on the the cusp of of everything. So I do know um, travel's a little bit tough. So tell everybody what you kind of started. If you can help out, this is greatly appreciated. This is something that all wrestlers, talent, promotion, referees, everybody has to deal with. And for this next big move for Devo, he might need a little help, right? And I know I'm going to drag this out of you, you son of a gun, because you don't want to say it. So tell everybody about your GoFundMe page. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. I um, I essentially made it because, you know, t times are tough, as everyone knows. And I, I just want to make it be seen. I've had a few people get negative about it. I put in there, if anybody were to read it, if you can't donate anything, I understand. Like, we're, it's a tough time right now. Just please share it. But essentially, for me to get to Atlanta, I had the money saved up i had a lot of things saved up for that and then you know life happened and i ended up having to spend that money so right now i'm kind of in a tough place trying to get to atlanta 
And if anyone could like help along with that journey, I appreciate it. If you can't, I understand, you know, life happens, but I'm just trying to turn this opportunity that I have with impact into something like my goal out of this is to eventually work with the knockouts division. Great group of ladies they got there. I'd love to get in the ring with them because I feel like once I can do that, I'll not only learn so much invaluable knowledge that I don't know because like they say in this business, you never stop learning. Right. But I'll have that moment in my life where it's my own personal fulfillment in a way. It's like everything of everybody telling me no and telling me I wouldn't last or I don't belong. It's like that would be the crowning moment of, well, I did it. So if And you, anyone else can too. So if you guys can help, that's greatly appreciated. It is tagged down, of course, in the notes here of the podcast. But if you can't help, I am asking, just share it. Because you don't know who on your friends list or somebody that would see this and say, oh, hot damn, I do know this guy. I do know Devo. I do know what's going on. I can send in five bucks, ten bucks, whatever. If you can't financially support Devo, share it. That means the world, too. So I ask you that from my bottom of the heart. And I will I will say this. You, you guys are going to see me work with Impact no matter what. Because I'll be honest, if I got to sell my dang TV, I'm going to sell the dang TV to make it there. Nothing's going to stop me from getting there. Right. But it's, if I, it's if I just can, a little bit of help in your pocket then, too. You'd like to eat when you're there, for the love of God, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, a 25-cent uh, pack of ramen would be nice. <laughs> Daniel Spencer, throw him a bone. You have a couple bucks. At least uh, buy him a Whataburger or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> God, he's going to hate me. I have been nothing but stirring the pot with him recently. All right, let's take a break from wrestling real quick, and let's find out what's Devo like to do. There's no wrestling. There's no gym. There's no training or anything. What do you like to do outside of professional wrestling? I'm a very boring person outside of wrestling. Not even going to lie. Um, if I'm not with Autumn and her kids or with, you know, that side of family, like with Charlie and all them, which is the father of Autumn's child. He's also a worker, great worker. By the way, I'm going to shout him out for this. Charlie Kingstone, love him to death. <laughs> if I'm not with them or with Alex doing something, I'm sitting at home. I'm either reading, listening to some type of music, cleaning, or honestly, I watch a lot of footage of wrestling and then I watch a lot of documentaries. Like, I'm one of those people that. I'll go out and do things, but if I don't have to spend money, I'm not going to spend money. <laughs> That's yes, that is my lifestyle. I agree. I agree. That there's so many documentaries out there. Like I just, we're going to talk about this. Me and my co-host on Saturday. I just watched the Woo one of Ric Flair on Peacock. By far the best Ric Flair one out there. I think right now. But I've also went back and I've just watched random documentaries of, I don't know, stuff that I, I just documentaries on wrestling to people I don't, I've never even heard of. I agree. If I don't le need to leave my house anymore, this pandemic, now that it's over, partially over, believe whatever you want's over, yeah. But when we were shut down, I, it was the greatest time of my life. I didn't have to go anywhere. I'm a bum. I love that, and I've just transitioned into being a bum. Work and documentaries and video games. That's my lifestyle. I was saying, have you seen the China documentary that Vice ended up releasing with her mother? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's another person that, if anybody didn't know, she impacted me a lot because I had the pleasure of speaking with her a couple weeks before she passed, and she gave me some great advice. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, I, I still have those messages that I keep to myself. But, like, she told me that, you know, this business is not for everybody. Not everybody can do it. And the people that end up doing it, it's 
it's not easy. Like she broke it down to me. It's not easy, but if you believe it, you can achieve it. And that just, that stuck with me because this was somebody that I ended up watching, you know, afterwards during the fact, and she was very much a part of my formative years. Like I will forever credit China as one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time. You know, she may not have been doing the things that the women are doing today, but you knew the name because she made some type of impact. And I just, I hate that her legacy is diminished by some financial decisions she made later on and personal issues. I just like China to me is one of those people that she was a beacon of hope for a lot of women that wanted to watch this. There are a lot of people in the LGBT community and she will forever be one of those people that I will always hold dear to my heart because in a way she gave that nudge for me to start as well. Met her at a uh, Pittsburgh comic con. Uh, I think it was two years before her passing and my son didn't come, but my best friend's son did. And you want to talk about the true love of children. Like, it was me and John that were there. And we're like, oh, my God, China, China. We want to give her a hug. And she was, like, so super, super amazing with us. And John's little boy clearly didn't remember China, you know, wrestling or anything. He had, you know, the action figure and everything like that. But he kind of, like, stood in the back behind us. She made a point to get us the hell out of the way to say hello to John's son. And that'll always stick with me because you don't have that with athletes to, you know, superstars or anything. They're there. Boom, bang. Okay. Peace out. Get out of the way. She's kindly. She didn't tell us to shut up, but she kindly is like, and who's this little guy? And, you know, the little guy was hiding. I don't want to bring up his name. Everybody knows him. But um, she made a point to come out from around the table and, you know, physically touch him, hug him and say, do you remember me, dad and uncle Mark talk about and broke the ice instantly. And now he only, he talks about, you know, seeing China, a wonderful human being. And I echo what you said for what happened in her, you know, later on in time, financially and other things. She should not be remembered that way at all. Uh, in the wrestling business, outside the wrestling business at all, because she was, like you said, that glimmer of hope. I, I miss her. I do. That's yeah. one person that I miss. Yeah. Wrestling has changed from like when I was a little kid to uh, all the time. So much has changed in wrestling. But, you know, have it be from, you know, your stereotypical, stereotypical you know, wrestlers to opening of the LGBTQ to just all of that. If you could change one more thing, because there's still, it's still dirty at times. If you could erase something that's still stuck in wrestling, what would you erase, Devo? I want to erase the fact that people get blacklisted when they tell the truth about things that have happened. Yes. Like that. And when I say that, I mean, during speaking out, Candy Lee was a big person in helping me share my story about an assault that happened to me when I was 17. And I'll be honest, there was that time period for a year and a half that I say I did not work. I was essentially blacklisted myself. And that's something I changed because these people that do this to the men and women of the business, I don't care if I piss people off by saying this, they don't belong in my business. Right. And that's how I feel. And I just, I wish that people could be more open to sharing their experiences so people know, because a lot of what I've seen is when people do come out and tell the truth, they're, they're silenced in a way because they, they never work again. And then if they do work, they never get to get to that scale that they want to. And I want that to change. I won't be able to people to be able to tell that truth and, make people aware of these people and not have anything against them because it's like they didn't ask for this to happen and they should be able to make people aware and there should be something done about it agreed uh, uh yes there definitely should be something done about it the the scumbags 
and I don't even want to get deeper into it, but uh, but these scumbags should just be eradicated from professional wrestling. Listen, I'm not in the business as as you are or others are, but I think I'm part of the business because of what I try to do with this podcast. And when I hear that, and I'm not even name a name. I don't want to make a fake name, but you know, da 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 da. Promoter X Y Z does this, and it just completely it disgusts me. Like I'm not one that people, I should say, die or anything. And you're really getting a lot out of me today. But an eye for an eye, you know, is not enough. If it's hurting the business, if it's hurting another human being, you should be eradicated from life. Without getting canceled, I'll say it that way. I agree, and that's that's how. Uh, that's like my main pet peeve with everything. And I guess, like beyond changing that, another thing that I would change is. I hope that we can change the fact that in the South, where I've mostly worked, there's not a lot of women available, and I want to usher in like bringing in anywhere I've went. I've tried to push for a women's division. That's another thing. I want to show these young ladies that are coming up or have interest that you can train and do something. It's not impossible. I'd like to see more women working because, you know, all of us can only go for so long. Why Why do you think it is um, that there's not a lot of women working in the South? Because about a year or two years ago, I was talking to, and I still talk to these guys, um, and CWO. I'm going to blow it or is NWCO. Nonetheless, it's a promotion in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma because I don't have my notes right now. They were going through the same thing. There's not a lot of women coming out. There's not. They're, they're, they're putting on the same two, three matches around the whole state of Oklahoma because they just don't come out. What is? What do you think it is with, you know, down in Tennessee or anything? But I, I do know we actually, and I'm not saying we, there's a lot from Pennsylvania that travel down there every once in a while. But there, you, Tennessee has millions of federations, though, right? That's not even touching the number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think the main problem with the southern area is women, like we mentioned earlier, women are not taken very seriously when they get into business. And everybody wants to make a woman just a valet. They don't want her to wrestle. And I'm like, no, let her wrestle. Yeah. Let her go. And I think that's that deters a lot of women as well as they want to wrestle, but they're stuck doing one thing or another. And it's I can honestly say there's still a lot of people down here stuck in their ways, which I understand you can't change everybody. But they feel like women don't have a place in this business. Or they're mad because a girl gets booked on the card and she's making – X amount of dollars when they're making X amount of dollars. I'm like, the reason why these women are bringing in the money that they're bringing is because in the South, I can honestly say it's, it's scary. It's like a special feature match to have a girls match. And I hate for that. I want to change it or we can all make the money we want to make. We can all do what we want to do, but there's a place for everybody. Yeah. Uh, again, it's 2023. There needs to, it's not even a need anymore a need is like i need a, a cup of coffee it is there should be a place and i'm i'm a strong advocate that it shouldn't just be a one match anymore for women like if there's eight matches on the card okay why can't it be 50 50 why can't it be i i understand what you're saying that the, the, the there's not enough but Bring some in. Minimum. Minimum, guys. There should be at least three women's matches on a card anymore. If you've listened to Can Crushers, you know, during pandemic time, I said it was Sasha, Bailey, Asuka, Britt, Thunder Rosa that carried us for that whole year. It wasn't Roman, Drew, Adam Cole, or anybody like that. They were telling the same stories. The women were doing the new stuff. That's what kept wrestling alive during the pandemic. Wake up. You mentioned Thunder Rosa. That is another person that I owe so much to. I love her. Uh, I don't know if 
you've seen, I I have her tattooed on my sleeve. And when I met her at WrestleCade, she essentially beat the shit out of me because I it was the first time I revealed that I had her tattoo logo on my sleeve. And she is like, this is unbelievable. I'm like, I'm like, Thunder, this is what you do for wrestling community, wrestling women, everything. I said, you're an inspiration to everybody in this world. So, yeah, go ahead. See, when I first met her, I was a little arrogant in my ways. And we had this lovely confrontational meeting where Miss Thunder Rosa decided to rip my rhinestone encrusted beautiful lip necklace from my neck and tell me I was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I proceeded to tell her, this is why Britt Baker is a better wrestler than you. Oh. And she chased me with the trash can. <laughs> but I'll, 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 I'll just decide. Um, she didn't have to do that segment with me. And that just speaks to the type of person that she is, that she wanted to push the character that I had. Right. That she did not only did that segment, but she fully let me take control. I'll send you the video later. Like, I have a few videos I got to send you now. <laughs> yeah, it's it. I'm getting I'll, a ton. I'll, I'll send you that video. Like, I was nervous, and you can just tell she took the lead with it. And she told me before we went into it that nothing is off limits with her. And she pushed me to do, do what my heart felt that I thought my character would do. So I forever thank her for that, too, because her and then Peter Avalon helped me a lot when I was first coming up. Like, all these people have formed who I am today, and I will always be thankful for them in that way because they gave me that push that I needed. That's awesome. You have a lot of people in your corner, a lot of people in your corner. Me now kicking them all out of the way, being number one. But I do want to talk about, before we dive into a couple more questions and let you go, um, you, you brought up that you did some work on Young Rock. This I did not know. This you need to tell me. What do we need? What, where? What season? What? Where do I need to find you? See, I did extra and stand-in work on season three of Young Rock. The season that's... I don't know if it's done airing right now or it's currently airing. I did... The work that I did, it was it was long days, 14-hour days, but it was one of those experiences that it really got me to that Hollywood field, and it was great because it was my first official Hollywood job was working on The Rock's TV show. Nice. And I, I don't... I don't know what I can talk about and can't talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't spill. Don't. Yeah, God, I, I, I don't want you being canceled or me being canceled or Young Rock because I love the Young Rock. So yeah, don't, don't be spilling too much. But that's awesome. Did you? And again, did you get to rub elbows with with anybody? That's where I met downtown Bruno. Okay. First time I met him, I had a friend that actually got cast in the show. Since this has already aired, I can talk about that. Um, he was cast as Nails, which if anybody knows The Rock's history, that was a big part of The Rock joining the nation for that heel turn. So I was there a part of that. I was ironically his stand-in for those scenes. And I will say this. Hollywood is very meticulous in how they do things. Um, for for the one Nation of Domination promo, we – did that about 27 takes. Oh my God. I got to iconically recreate the nation entrance when we were setting up the stand in. Cause like a lot of people don't know stand in are the people that help you get the camera shots that you need. Yep. So when I was doing that, I got to recreate that nation entrance. I got to do the, the whole fist and, you know, we are the nation of domination. It was just one of those great experiences. I'll never forget it. I had a lot of fun doing it and they, Ironically, if asked me to come back, it's just I've been so busy wrestling that I haven't got a chance to go back around and do it. But you wouldn't heartbeat, right? You wouldn't heartbeat. Well, I'll, I'll tell you like I told them, as long as the checks keep clearing, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche. Yeah, you send me all this money, I'll, I'll fly anywhere you want me to. Huh? I'll be the Rolex wearing. Yeah, you know, understand where I'm going to go with that. You've mentioned some people, but uh, I really I do I do the dream match question, and 
and I understand, and it should change, because I had Manny Fernandez on the show, and he's like, you know what, this should change every six months for a professional wrestler. So, my caveat, who's your dream match with? I want the stipulation and the where as well. And you can't say, you can't say Madison Square Garden or, you know, any of the big places. I want something like that means something to you. See, I have, I have two. Okay. That's fine. You can have 20 as long as they're not My two- stupid. No, I'm kidding. No, you're good. You're good. My two big ones, the first one would be, and if you ask anybody, everybody knows this, Mickey James, mm-hmm. because I've had the chance to meet and connect with her on a personal level. I'm not going to go into what our conversation was, but we like, I will say that at our taping, she was one of those, she didn't have to. She sat with me for two and a half hours. I got to meet her little boy. Her husband, Nick, used my knee pads for a match. It was pretty cool. And she's just someone I always looked up to, like, if you look at my gears, the bell bottoms were inspired by her. Yep. And that's one person that if I could have that ideal match with her, I want it to be one on one. I want it to be a part of the last rodeo tour that she's doing. I was gonna say you could. And you're you're going to Atlanta. So say I want it to be for impact. Yeah. Like I Mickey is the top person. Like I just I have a special love in my heart for her because of what she has done for me and encouraged me to do as well. And then the second one is this, this probably throw people off, but it's Cody Rhodes. I love Cody. And another I, person that's on my sleeve tattoo. I love, I love the whole Rhodes family in, in general. But yeah, go ahead. You can tell your story about Cody. I just I've always looked up to Cody. I had the biggest crush on Cody when I was a teenager. I just I, that's one person like just with his knowledge of the business. Is in rework. That's somebody I want to work. Nice. A- any stipulations for either one of them? Um, I think the Mickey James match. Since I kind of we made the joke that when she handed me the knockouts title at the tapings, that I am technically a former one time knockout champion. I like to make that official and actually, you know, sorry Mickey, love you to death, kiss kiss, but got to give you the kiss and the roll up to win the knockouts title. Send her on her way, right? <laughs> Storybook ending. Yeah. And, and Cody. Then with Cody. Uh, I think a submission match would be fun with him. Okay. All right. Anywhere, anywhere special? Like I said, Mickey impact Cody. Honestly, I feel like if I were to get to that point any day, a takeover match with Cody. Like an NXT takeover. Oh, nice. I like that with Trips running the show. Yeah. All right. Or actually HBK, but yeah. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Did I miss anything that you want to, do you want to tell everybody about where are you going to be? Because I know, I do know you have, you know, your, your impact tapings, but there's another show you're pushing in February already. By the way, one of the greatest people that uses social media in wrestling right here. Listen, you idiots. If you don't follow him, you're stupid. Because not only does he share where he's going to be, he promotes other wrestlers too, which is awesome. He knows how to use social media. So, Devo, tell everybody about your social medias and where you're going to be and all that. So, my um, Instagram is one true Devo. That's, you know, I don't post on there as much as I should. I normally just post in match shots, my Facebook. If any fans or anybody wants to add me, any promoters, because, you know, I'm always looking for work. <laughs> it's Devo Dior. My uh, Twitter is the official Devo. And it's just, you know, upcoming bookings. I have Atlanta from January 12th to, I believe, the 15th, where I'm doing the ring crew stuff and hopefully more beyond that. I have, um, TIWF in Trenton, Tennessee. I have some out-of-state bookings coming up. I have um, Euphoria, Mississippi on February 11th with Terry Boykin and Old School Championship Wrestling where I'm hosting the first ever Devo Open Invitational, which is, as I told people, is an open to any woman in the crowd or in the back, anyone that decides to show up. I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's your mom, your sister, your grandma, 
your cousin's dog walker's owner's <laughs> fiance's maid. If you're a woman and you want to get in the ring with me, I will happily wrestle you. I love that. And then it's just like, I, I'm going to Texas in February along with Charlie Kingstone. I'm riding down there with him. I, I can't remember the date. Oh, God, this is terrible. I got to look at my calendar. No, it's okay. I, You're going to put them all on your social medias anyway. And then, you know, I'm kind of, I don't know if I should put this out there, but I'm going to anyway. I'm kind of working towards getting booked to cross the pond right now for the summer. What? Yes. I got talked to about a pride show over there, so I'm going to see about trying to make that work. So hopefully everybody will see me in Manchester this summer. If things go right. Nice. Nice. That's huge. That's huge. I was just going to say, what other, I mean, because you're knocking a lot of states off and everything like that, but what other goals do you have for, you know, 2023 now? I want to wrestle in another country. That's what I want. Clearly. Manchester is definitely another country. And I think, like, just my biggest thing is, like, I'd like to wrestle in the U.K., and that's where Manchester comes in. Um, I'd like to go to Mexico at least once, if not this year, in the next couple of years. And I think to round it off, I want to get signed this year. Like, that's my biggest goal is I want to get signed. Hopefully, my work improves impact enough where that happens. And if it doesn't happen, I'll just continue to work towards it. There you go. A uh, question I didn't ask when I should have. How much wrestling do you get to watch now, like of AEW Impact? And I know you said you're like a homebody and you're doing studies, but I still imagine you're doing like old school studies. How much of the current product are you up on and everything? So uh, I hate say this. I hate none. Say it none. like this. Say it. Just say it. Just rip the bandaid off. None. Do it. Uh, I don't. Well, actually, I, I watch, but like sometimes, if, I'll be honest with you, if it doesn't interest me, I, I have it on as background noise while I'm folding laundry. Hell, that's a, that's every wrestling fan, Devo. That's and then it, every wrestling fan. So you, th- there's no hate towards you. The only show that I fully watch without doing anything is AEW. I'll watch Dynamite. I have watched clips of Rampage. I'll cut on Raw on Mondays. Um, Impact, of course, I keep up with Impact. You know, you know, Gail, hey, I need a job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Duh. Duh. And then it's, I, I keep up with a lot of independent wrestling, too. Yeah. Because I like to – there's one thing, like you mentioned earlier, I like to promote as many wrestlers as I can because I don't know if you've seen my post, but I tell everybody, I know that not everybody's going to make it, but if I can help push people forward to help them make it, it's never been a selfish game for me in a way. I want to push anybody that I can. Because I want everybody to have some type of platform. So I watch a lot of guys and girls, and I try to push their stuff forward, too. What, what was the number one thing that I told you why I love having this podcast? It's for independent wrestlers. Everybody knows the story of Randy Orton, The Miz, and da 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 If I can be that guy that gives Devo and you know Bob Smith and Ashley, whoever, and this or that, their time to tell a story... Let them know their chance maybe to be heard by Daniel Spencer, Al Snow, Cody Rhodes, Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, that's what I want to be. So I understand. I understand. That's why I love independent wrestling more so sometimes than AEW Impact or the WWE. I just I love this business as a whole, and I want it to flourish. I think that's the long story short for me. I just want to see wrestling flourish and succeed. Yep, I agree. All right, Devo. I've had an amazing time. This will not be, and I'm going to tell you guys right now. I don't know when it's going to be, but this will not be the last time you hear from Devo this year. I promise you, Devo will make a return. If he's going across the pond, and let's all push him to go across the pond, uh, we definitely want to have Devo back on to talk about the experience once you get back from across the pond. So, yes, this will not be Devo's only time on Can Crushers this year. We'll have him back on. I'll I'll be back. Just just know when I win the knockout title, you'll be the first one to get the interview. 
Yes. Yeah, make sure you have title in hand. Okay. All is said and done. That it's a couple minutes after the match. Mickey has left the ring. And then Daniel Spencer raises your hand and you just fucking clock him with the belt. Then <laughs> that would be amazing. There's only one person that can touch this damn title. And that's me. Right. Right. <laughs> Leave your hands off us, Daniel. Devo, I love you. Thank you for spending time with us today on Can't Crushers. Thank you for uh, taking my podcast virginity. <laughs> That was awkward. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Debo Dior. Wow. Uh, guys, you know, every year we have this thing called the Crushy Awards. And we have this one thing, one category called Can Crusher Interview of the Year. Yeah. We might have just had it. Season 7, Episode 1. Talk about letting it all out and talking about things... And circumstances that could have held you back, yet you just power through. Unbelievable. Unbelievable way to start an interview season off. Um, I'm delighted that I reached out to Devo and he got so excited to come on Can't Crushers and talk about everything. This was awesome. Uh, we spent a lot of time after the interview as I pulled the fourth wall down, the curtain, whatever you want to call it, just talking. And uh, we're going to keep each other's number for a while because he's a great human being. From talking about lifestyles and professional wrestling and all of that encapsulated into one, this was this was a pretty powerful interview for me, for him. And I hope for all of you guys listening to on Can Crushers, <sighs> Devo, thank you. And you know what for. Uh, I said it when I hung out with you. I'll say it again. I love you. Guys, this is why I do the show. This is why I do it for interviews like this, for impact like this, the impact wrestling like that. No, for everything that you get out of it. Um, it's awesome. If you want to be part of Can Crushers, and you have a story like this, like Devo did. Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Drop us a letter, an email, whatever you want to call them. Slide into any of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Let's talk. We'll set something up. I can't wait to have you on the show. Because if you can impact somebody, like Devo knows that he impacted already, and he's humble, and he says he doesn't know if he did or he didn't. That's a lie. He did. That's what you do in life. And this is awesome. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called the garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Remember to tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know. Yeah.